So, it's that time again, I suppose. It doesn't seem like that long ago that I said, well, I'm not going to be doing many more lists for a while. But, well, people have spoken, people do really enjoy them, and, well, why not give people what they want? In particular, there have been a lot of requests for a Sega Master System list, and so, you know what? I do enjoy playing games on a Master System. I used to love playing them back in the day, I love playing them now, so, hey, why not do a little list? Now, the Master System does have kind of a smaller lot of games to choose from. There's only about, what, 320-odd games, I think, released for the Master System over the course of its lifetime. So, alas, I wasn't quite able to get 100 games out of this list, but I have been able to get a nice little top 50 of my personal favourite Master System games. As ever, there's some choices which may be a little unconventional. Games that I used to love back in the day that may not necessarily be, you know, the most biggest critical darlings nowadays, but it's a list that's quite personal to me. They're all games that there's always something about any of these games here. So I suppose, as that YouTube phrase goes, without any further ado, let's get on with this top 50 of the Sega Master System. In at number 50 we have what I think is quite a famous game as far as the Master System goes, Rambo First Blood Part 2, also known as Ashura in Japan and I believe a Secret Command here in Europe, but most people know this as obviously Rambo, you know, you've got John Rambo, Sly Stallone, you've got the bow, you've got the gun, you've got all the things that would you would expect in a Rambo time. Basically, Rambo goes around, rescues some POWs, because we get to win this time, and murders a lot of dudes. It's a um, fairly famous Master System game goes, I mean, it's kind of like the Master System version of Ikari Warriors, stuff like that, Commando, I suppose. Um, I was never a big fan of Ikari Warriors, which this game is pretty close to, but yeah, it's, it's pretty okay, you know, as far as these things go. In at number 49, Basketball Nightmare. Has to be said that unlike a lot of the previous lists, there really aren't that many sports games on here. There's a couple, but um, Master System generally was not a good system for sports games. I mean, you had all those great games, you know, great soccer great football, great basketball, none of those games were great. Basketball Nightmare is one of the better ones, I mean it's certainly as far as basketball goes, it's as good as you can pretty much get on the Master System. Um, it's a weird basketball game of course, you only have one period, you play as these team of like children or whatever against weird monsters and that. But as a basketball game, you know what, it actually plays okay and kind of like Double Dribble, it's got cool dunk animations as well, which is it's silly little extras like that that get a, you know, you get a kick out of it, kind of shows the graphical power of the Master System in a very shallow way. So yeah, I quite enjoy this one. In at number 48, we have Fantasy Zone. Um, Fantasy Zone, I mean, for me, especially in the arcade, is an absolutely fantastic kind of cutesy, cutesy defender sort of game. Um, and also Super Fantasy Zone on the Mega Drive is a fantastic game as well. I have to say, Fantasy Zone on the Master System um, is okay. It's not, to me, the best conversion of the original game. I mean, it'd kind of be a bit of a toss-up as far as that one goes. But, you know, Fantasy Zone is Fantasy Zone, and it's a cool game. It's got awesome music, of course, and um, fantastic boss fights. It's a very memorable game, memorable game, bleh, visually. Um, so it kind of has to be on the top 50. It is a very famous game. I mean, you can't really not have a Master System list without several appearances from the system's mascot, Opa Opa, or, you know, people would say, is it Opa Opa? Is it Alex Kidd? Opa Opa probably appeared in more games. It's a toss-up, but they're definitely like the two big figures, so naturally a list is going to be peppered with them. 47. Lord of the Sword. Lord of the Sword is, um, again, a strange one. I mean, it's um, there's a few of these kind of big side-scrolling games on the um, Master System. 
are they necessarily as good as like similar nest titles not really i mean what they kind but what they kind of lack in gameplay they do kind of make up with in awesome graphics if you're into that sort of thing lord of the swords doesn't rank much higher than 47 because it's very similar to a game that we'll be seeing a lot later that literally came out at the same time if you kind of know the master system you probably know what that game is it has a few kind of confusing spots like it keeps telling you to um go here go there but you know the game doesn't have a map or anything like that but um it's a memorable enough game visually to kind of stand out and just kind of sneak into the lower reaches 46 action fighter basically sega's answer to spy hunter is it as good a game as spy hunter not really but it's kind of got its own little quibbles like you know you can not only have a bike but you've got a car and your car can turn into a plane and all sorts of strange things like that it's a bloody frustrating game i mean this is a game where seriously you just end up dying and dying and getting blown up over and over again usually by these rogue ambulances that tend to just be clutter the road everywhere and eventually when you get a decent enough power upon your weapon you take great satisfaction in shooting those ambulances i mean who cares about the sick people inside of them they're in your way and you've got a mission that's literally been signed off by the president so you know those people in ambulances getting in your way basically they deserve to die <laughs> so yeah um it's a cool little game probably better in the arcades but again a Master System game that was quite a big deal for me growing up. Number 45, here's an odd one that you might not expect to see, especially seeing as I am a Britisher. Reggie Jackson, Baseball. Um, baseball is... Um, I do actually have quite a love for baseball, even though it is a very, very American sport. Always used to like watching it on Channel 5 when it started coming in through the night there. Um... I'm not very good at most baseball games, in fact I'd say I'm pretty terrible at them. I do like this one though, maybe it's the music that's the main thing I like about this. I think this actually has kind of a cool soundtrack, it's better than like the usual fanfares and that that you often get in these games. It's also the precursor to another baseball game that I'm kind of fond of which is a Super League or Tommy Lasorda baseball if you're American. This is kind of the game that is very, much, it's very similar to that one. So I kind of dig both these games and the Master System being what it, what it is, if I'm honest, maybe, you know, a game like this certainly wouldn't get into a Mega Drive disc, but there's, because there's so little comparatively games released on the Master System, a cute game like this does get in at, like, number 45 or so. In at number 44, we have our first appearance from good old Alex Kidd. And uh, it's Alex Kidd, The Lost Stars. Weirdly, this was actually the first Alex Kidd game. It came out in the arcades before any of the other Sega games. But on the actual Sega Master System itself, I believe it was second. It, it was either second or third. It was either this or um, High Tech World that came out after Miracle World did. Or hell, maybe it was even BMX Trial. Um, this is a... Um, it's a very basic platform. It's um, kind of like a game that we will be seeing a little bit later on, Wonder Boy, in that you've kind of got a timer that's also a health bar, and whenever you hit an enemy, that timer goes down as opposed to you losing a life or what have you. Um, kind of frustrating. Again, this is another one of those games where you die a lot, and whenever you die, Alex does make this really loud scream like, ah! which can get a little annoying. It is cute, though. And um, it's got FM music, which I always enjoy about these Master System games. I really love the sound of the Master System's FM sound chip. It's not necessarily the most loudest and most bombastic of sound chips, but I enjoy pretty much all the good examples of FM music that they're out there. And this is quite a decent one. Number 43, we have Casino Games. Casino Games is, I mean, it's, um, I think Compile might have made this actually, kind of like Parlor Games, which we'll be seeing later on. Um, this is, um, you know, it's a compilation of games you'd find in a casino. You know, you can play some poker, play some blackjack, play some baccarat if you, if, if you understand it and you want to feel like James Bond. There's, um, a fruit machine, there's pinball, there's, I think, is there a roulette? I think so. There's a whole bunch of stuff. Um... If you're not really into this sort of thing, you may not dig it, but I do have to point out Casino Games because it does have, honestly, one of the greatest game over sequences of all time. You know, you're announced as bankrupt and then you forlornly kick a can over the street and 
There's always tomorrow, it says. There's always tomorrow to lose even more money in the casinos. Always gamble responsibly. Number 42, Road Fighter. Ah, Road Fighter. I do enjoy this arcade game. It's a very simple one, one where you ride a car at high speed along a top down and just try to avoid all the other cars getting you in the way. I was quite obsessed um, last time I was in Cambridge with the MSX2 version, I believe it is, of this game. Um, and this is, of course, quite similar. I mean, all the ports on this are pretty similar. It's a very simple arcade game. And the Master System plays a decent Road Fighter, so yeah, sticking it on the list here. Number 41, we have Monty Zuma's Revenge, um, a game that would probably mainly be familiar to microcomputer users. This is kind of one of the archetypal classic microcomputer platformers in that you kind of go around a sort of fairly open world and try to get all the trinkets, get all the keys and all that. Master System plays a pretty good version of this game. It's got obviously nicer graphics than like the Commodore 64, what have you, which is probably the system I mainly played this one on. Um, it's a perfectly decent game. It's nice to see something like this on the, um, the system. There's kind of a few things like this kicking about. Number 40, a definite Sega Master System classic, we have Wonder Boy. It's kind of pointed out by um, Quantendo, or Con, um, one of his Con Sega games, which I've kind of been watching a lot recently. At the time that this was released, which I think was about 1986, just how close this was to the original arcade version, like one of the closest arcade ports we'd seen on a console in years, like since the early days of the NES. Um, so certainly you have to give credit to Wonder Boy than that. Um, the series would go into many different directions over the years, and we'll certainly be seeing some of those as we get further down the list. But this first platformer is one that I always like to play as fast as possible, because again, you've got like the time timer, that's also a health bar in a way. Well, actually, no, no, the timer isn't really a health bar, you die in one hit if you hit any monster, but you have the fruit that you need to collect along the way so that your it doesn't run out, so it's kind of like health bar. It's very cutesy, it's got a very catchy soundtrack, one of those real earworms. Yeah, I don't think you can really say too much wrong about this game. It's a nice little title, one of that a sort of one of the pe ones that people would perhaps consider quintessential for the Master System. Number 39, Golden Axe Warrior was Sega's answer to Legend of Zelda, one of the few answers to Legend of Zelda that we'll be seeing. Not necessarily the best one, it has to be said. But if you like Zelda games, it's okay. It can be a bit tougher than Legend of Zelda because um, you don't necessarily have the uh, projectile factor. Enemies can be quite sneaky in this game and it is easy to get killed pretty damn quick in this game if you're not on your toes. Um, it doesn't necessarily have the same brilliant layout as the original Legend of Zelda does. It's an okay little game as far as these things go. Certainly more involved than your regular action title. It's alright. Give it a go if you like Zelda games. Number 38, Renegade. Renegade, I mean, I suppose this is a game that I mostly identify, weirdly enough, with the ZX Spectrum. I mean, it's a game that I've played tons on the Spectrum. It's one of my favourite Spectrum games, a classic beat-em-up. But the Master System does do a good and more kind of involved, perhaps, bit of Renegade. It's got more fins in it than the Spectrum version has. And if you like beating people up in the Renegade fashion, you know, getting those kicks in, kneeing people to the face and all that, you can you can do pretty well with this version. It's better than a lot of the other Master Systems attempts at beat em ups. I mean, I have to say, I don't particularly like Vigilante. I don't particularly like the 8-bit versions of Streets of Rage. So something like Renegade for me is probably as good as like beat em ups get in my book. Although we will be seeing another one later on that's the best. Number 37, Bonanza Brothers. Bonanza Brothers is a Sega game that you tend to see quite a lot revived. Obviously this was on the Mega Drive as well, although I've always kind of identified it as belonging a bit more to like the 8-bit era of Sega, hence why it's here as opposed to the Mega Drive list. Um, it's a very unique little game. I do love the game's look. I think there's not many games that kind of look like it around. Very, um, very weird sort of art style. You've got a kind of bit of sneakiness here and there. I love also that how the Western plot was kind of 
skewered into you are expert thieves but what you're actually doing is testing the security systems out of these places as opposed to actually robbing them whereas in the original Japanese version you're just thieves and you are just robbing the places and shooting the guards and all that sort of thing. It is a fun little game and again it's got one of those very catchy soundtracks that's kind of not necessarily perhaps the first sort of soundtrack you'd think to have for a game like this but when you actually play it it does fit. In at number 36 we have Ghostbusters. Now this is a game that I think these days perhaps gets a bit of an unfair rap. Um, mainly probably because of the hideous, and I do mean hideous, NES version of this game. This is a game again that I played most, I certainly played it for the first time on microcomputers which is perhaps where it's more at home. But this Master System version of the game is probably the nicest you can get of it on consoles. Obviously um, if you've played it you know kind of the deal, you kind of drive around and you try to find where the um, ghosts are that you need to get and then you kind of aimlessly wash, you know, wave your, you know, your streams about trying to get them all into a ghost trap and then eventually you go to the Zool building and all of that lot. Is it a really good game? No, it's certainly not a game that has aged well, but it's not as bad, I mean, as bad as the NES version of this game is, and it is terrible. The actual game itself isn't as bad as that game is, if that makes sense. Number 35, here's one that I used to play quite a lot as a kid. Uh, the Incredible Hulk for the Master System. This is a quite a late one, I think this was like 93, I think. Came out in Europe only, obviously, because by 1993 Europe was the only real place, and Brazil, that the Master System was even a thin. Um, this isn't exactly a very well-known game, but I think you'll agree if you look at it, as far as like Master System goes, I mean, this is a pretty cracking looking title. I don't think that like, this is that far from the 16-bit um, version of this game, and that game was definitely one that was had stronger graphics than it had gameplay. It's kind of a fun little game because you play as the Hulk and you get to just um, chuck enemies around basically. You walk up to them, you grab them and then just throw them behind you. It's um, kind of fun in that way. It's not a brilliant game, it certainly has some problems. The boss fights can be annoying as hell and you just get beaten up and then inevitably you get turned back into Bruce Banner and you get killed. But it's, um, it's kind of cool. It's also, I believe, a very rare title now so if you kind of have this kicking about it is actually um it's worth quite a bit of money as i found out to my distress because as with all my childhood games this ended up in a skip so yeah number 34 we have ghost house this is a really cool early game one of the earliest master system games it's kind of got that classic cliched horror vibe you go around this spooky house and um, you fight various versions of dracula you try and land on the knife so that you can use it and get a bit of an advantage you use um you jump on the lights in order to try and freeze dracula especially ideally when he's not in bat form cool music again cool fm soundtrack or oh, is it psg for this one actually i think it's psg this one um yeah, cool little simple enough game. Not like, you know, spooky spooky, but really good. Number 33, we have Galaxy Force. Galaxy Force is a weird one. I mean, at the time that this was released, you're talking about the late 80s, this is perhaps one of the most advanced, if not the most advanced, arcade cab that Sega had. An absolutely ridiculous affair when you actually play the original arcade game. Some of the conversions of this game can surprise you. It actually had a couple of really cool microcomputer ports, believe it or not, um, especially on the Amstrad CPC. Um, this Master System port is not too bad either. It's a little bit choppy, but it is quite fully featured as a game and quite playable. It's certainly a lot better than the Mega Drive conversion of Galaxy Force was. The Mega Drive version of Galaxy Force is absolutely appalling and it actually ends up being a lot better on the Master System which is um, weird. It's not generally supposed to work like that but that's not the only example of that it has to be said on the Master System. We might see a couple more later. Number 32, Scramble Spirits. A lot of people would say that this is a pretty generic top-down shooter and again, for as many top-down shooters as there were on the Master System, it doesn't particularly have a fantastic hit rate, there's a lot of them that are kind of just boring. But I don't know, I kind of have a soft spot for this one. Maybe it's kind of just got that, um, 
I don't know, I like the shoot 'em ups like Fire Shark and that, where it's not necessarily just a spaceship, you actually kind of have some sort of like classic warplane that you're controlling. Um, I find this shooting map playable. It's not the hardest shooting world. In fact, it's pretty easy as far as these fins go, but is a good one. In at number 31, just outside the top 30, we've got Teddy Boy. Teddy Boy, um, a launch title for the Master System, or more specifically the Mark III in Japan. Um, weirdly, a game that's based on, I believe, some Japanese pop song, or it shares um, the same name, Teddy Boy Blues. Um, a very simple game, certainly not a showcase for the Master System's graphical quality when compared to the NES, but a very playable one. It can kind of be, an, be annoying at times because you're usually in a very confined space and enemies are quick and often just jump at you and you can't really do much about it. But there is a certain franticness to it, you always kind of have to move otherwise the platform that you want will set on fire. And yeah, it's got a cool arcade sensibility about it. I mean, Sega did a lot of arcade games before, obviously, they ended up doing the big super scalar ones, and they're kind of a mixed bag, but to me, Teddy Boy is one of the better ones of Sega's earlier arcade years. So yeah, I enjoy this on the Master System very much. I think it's quite addictive. In at number 30, we have Fantasy Zone 2 with its beautiful subtitle, The Tears of Opa Opa. So, so <laughs> there's something about that title, very, um, very literalistic, that's not even a word. Anyway, I mean, I suppose I already said a lot about Fantasy Zone already, and a lot of that obviously applies here, it's a sequel to Fantasy Zone, it's more of the same, only things are a bit better with this Master System sequel, the graphics are a bit stronger, I think the gameplay is also a bit more tightened here. There's some things about the Fantasy Zone Master System version that I do think are a little bit unfair, and here they kind of seem to have been sorted out. I'm not sure if the warps and that going through each stage and kind of warping and that, I'm not sure how necessary it is, Perhaps it loses a bit of the speed of Fantasy Zone when you have that stuck in, but I still would prefer playing this on the Master System as opposed to the Master System's conversion of Fantasy Zone. So yeah, I like it a lot. Number 29, another game from my childhood days, Parlor Games, also known as uh, Family Games, I believe, in other areas. Um, this is a game by Compile, not the usual sort of thing you'd expect from Compile, and we will be seeing those games later on. Um, it's a game with um, various parlour games on it, even though parlour is a word that probably hasn't been used that much since like the 1920s or so. Anyway, you've got pool, you've got darts, and you've got bingo. Darts is probably the best thing here as far as actually playing darts. It has a really good dart system which very few games manage to get right. It takes a bit of learning to actually get the arc and the power in working together in perfect harmony. But the pool is probably the thing I played the most. It's um, of good standard as you'd expect from Compile because these guys did make Lunar Pool on the NES which was a really good, probably the best pool game you could get on consoles at the time as weird as it is. So yeah, that's pretty strong, although if you put it on professional mode, holy hell does the computer cheat. The computer just makes these ridiculous shots and you simply can't beat it unless it makes some mistake and ends up like potting the nine or something. So yeah, um, again, this is a game that I used to play a lot. This is one of the Master System games that I used to have as a kid and used to plunk into my older Master System converter on my Mega Drive. So yeah, love it. 28 we have Land of Illusion, the Master System entry into the good old Mickey Mouse series of games. Land of Illusion is perhaps more like Castle of Illusion than World of Illusion in that only Mickey's here. It's got kind of similar stuff in that you have to um, press the button in order to get Mickey to butt bounce on the enemies so you can't just jump on them normally. Um, it's got perhaps a few more puzzle elements than Castle has. Castle is a bit more of a straight ahead platformer whereas this does have some difficult fins about it sometimes. It can be actually kind of a tricky game compared to the other castle, compared to the other Illusion games, certainly when compared to World of Illusion, which is as easy as hell. Um, but yeah, it's, it's still pretty much off the same standard. It's a good 8-bit addition to the series of generally solid games. 27. Ken Siden. This is the game that I was alluding to earlier when we covered Lord of the Sword. If you compare these two games, you'll see they're very similar. I mean, they both have pretty big sprites. You're both you're wielding a sword around in both of them in quite similar animations, it has to be said. 
Um, Kensington is definitely the better of the two games, definitely the one that I played more often back in the day. Um, it's got a very cool kind of Japanese horror vibe, I guess you could call it a yokai. Is that the word for it? Japanese like yokai vibe, which um, a fair few games have taken bits of over the years. Um, excellent FM soundtrack again. Um, frustrating game at times, your attacks really aren't that great. Um, some people kind of compare this a lot to Castlevania. Um, I don't know how really... I mean, there is certainly similarities here to Castlevania, but it does strike its own different path. There is another game that we'll be seeing later on that is very similar to Castlevania, whereas Kensington, not as similar as that game is. It certainly takes things from the Konami classic, though. Um, generally a game that I find to be quite enjoyable. It has its frustrating moments, and the enemies can be bastards with the attacks that you've got, but I like it. In at number 26 we have R-Type. I mean, who who doesn't love a bit of R-Type? Everyone's got good conversions of R-Type that they enjoy. We've already seen the Spectrum one on my Spectrum list where it was pretty high because that's a fantastic achievement on such a system. And the Master System version of R-Type is really cool too. It's even got some funky little extras that other versions of the game don't have. Not necessarily the best extras, but they're there. And as for the rest of it goes, well, it's our type. It's a classic arcade shooter by Iwam. You've got all the brilliant, glorious-looking bosses. You've got the rock-hard difficulty. You've got the blasting music. You've got all the things you need for a good time with a true classic of an arcade game. What else do you need? So we are halfway through the list, and cutting the list in half at number 25, we've got Zillion. Zillion is a game that I kind of go up and down on. Um, it does have awesome music, I'll say that. My, the theme song to this game is probably the best thing about it. Um, it's kind of like Impossible Mission, I suppose, which also has a version on the Master System, but this is a bit better. Um, it's kind of got that sort of early metroid -y type vibe in that things are very open. You have to um, hit up all the fins and get all the symbols, which I tend to use weird mnemonics for just so I can remember them when I actually put a key card in. There's lots of traps and sensors. It can be annoying in parts. There are some irritating things about the design. But it is kind of a weird game. It is kind of funny how it's kind of almost a commercial in a way for the Master System light phaser, seeing as that's the gun that you're using to beat all these enemies up with. Um, and it's based on an anime, so it did feature back in the A to Z of licensed games as the very last entry way back when, so it kind of has a place in my heart for that reason, because it was kind of the ending point to a major series of videos that I did. So yeah, I do like Zillion a lot in many ways. Um, there were times when I would class it as one of my favourite Master System games. It's kind of gone down a little bit since then, but it is very enjoyable. In at number 24 we have Ninja Gaiden. A lot of people are often quick to point out that the Master System Ninja Gaiden is not exactly of the same standard as the three Ninja Gaiden games on the NES, all of which are action classics, and yeah, perhaps it's not quite as good as those three games, but those three games are absolutely fantastic, and Master System Ninja Gaiden is still a pretty high quality title in my view. You know, it's got the sort, it does still have the same, it retains the same fast action of the Master System games. I mean, there are perhaps some things about the game's design that's a bit more frustrating than the NES versions are, where, you know, in the NES version, you know, kind of when you get hit a lot of the times, it's your fault. Sometimes this game can be a little bit cheap, it has to be said, more so than the NES games, but it's still fun to, you know, go around and be a ninja and take everything at top speed and kind of move in that classic ninja guide and fast as hell momentum, you know, the way that you should play these games. This is not a game that you play cautiously. This is a game that you run red over, you know, just trying to just smash through enemies as fast as possible. And so I enjoy it. 23, Road Rash. Another game that is very hard to find someone who's going to say that they dislike. And Road Rash on the Master System is seriously a 
pretty fantastic conversion. This kind of shows, I mean, there's other games you get like, I don't know, Out on Europa is probably a good example. That's another kind of bike racing game with, you know, action elements. That's really pretty damn ropey. And then you get something like this. This is kind of what the Master System was really capable of. I mean, you look at this game, and then you look at the 16-bit Road Rash, the more famous Mega Drive version. They really aren't that different. Like the music's still there, the graphics are very much there, the speed is there as well. It really does not look that different from the Mega Drive version. I mean, you'd find it difficult to tell them apart in many ways if it weren't for certain things like perhaps the biker himself is not as detailed as it is in the Mega Drive version. But as far as playability goes, everything's there. This is a fantastic conversion and for me it certainly wants a place on the list just for that reason. In at 22 we have good old Space Harrier. Um, I'd have to say, I mean, there's tons of conversions of Space Harrier. There was a lot, there was the one on the NES, there was a bunch on the microcomputers. You can even find Space Harrier on the Spectrum. It's kind of natural that the Master System one would be the best one, at least of these Space Harrier conversions that were released at the time. It is kind of annoying in some ways. There is a certain choppiness to Space Harrier on the Master System that does make it less kind of more annoying than the arcade version it can be sometimes kind of difficult to judge bullets for that reason it also kind of hurts sometimes that bullets are the same color as the enemies that's a kind of annoying touch like you can see why perhaps they did it maybe to reduce like flicker which is still a problem in this game um it's good it's space harry is a game like the master, you can tell that the Master System is kind of struggling with it, but it's a very noble effort to get this game on the Master System and get it in a very clever way. So for me, it's my favourite conversion of the original contemporary conversion for that reason. Obviously, there's like the 32X version, which is very close to Arcade Perfect. That would be the winner, but this is really good as well. 21, Enduro Racer. I don't think that this Master System version of Enduro Racer gets too much love. It's a, Obviously, it's a very different game from the arcade. The arcade was a classic scalar racing game, and this ends up being isometric. But um, as simple as this game is, with kind of the repetitive courses and all that, weirdly, the US, the Western version of this game cuts the amount of courses that you get in half compared to the Japanese version, which is kind of bullshit. But this is... Um, Again, again, I used to play a lot of this back in the day. I kind of enjoyed trying to get through the courses as fast as possible, upgrading the bike and, yeah, just enduring it. I'm a lot better at this game than I am the arcade version of Enduro Racer. I am notoriously terrible at the arcade Enduro Racer, it has to be said. This game, I can actually do quite well in. I can actually get somewhere in this game, so perhaps that biases me into putting it quite high up on the list. But, yeah, I dig it. I mean, most people kind of just think of it as a very average racing game, but I like it. Number 20, we have Double Dragon. Double Dragon on the Master System is a excellent conversion. It's a difficult conversion of the game. Enemies do tend to take quite a lot of hits, and they're kind of smart in the way they go at you. It's very easy to just get caught into punch and kicks or to get caught by one of those sneaky jump kicks they do. But um, as far as conversions of the game goes, this is as close as you could get probably back in the day to the arcade. I mean, the NES version has its own qualities in my view. I don't think the NES version is that bad at all. But if you want my like, arcade Double Dragon, Master System does a pretty damn good job of it. And again, it's really good if you can play a version that's got the FM soundtrack as opposed to the PSG. In at 19, we have Afterburner. Afterburner, I have to say, generally is a weird one for me. Obviously, it's a game that I have a lot of nostalgic memories for because of the cabinet, and, you know, it's amazing. Like, the cabinet makes the game in many ways, so it can be kind of difficult to really love a lot of the home conversions of the game. I mean, there's, like, Mega Drive versions, there's obviously your crappy microcomputer conversions and all other more recent stuff. Um, it's hard to really enjoy those for me just because they lack in the bombast. But again, kind of like Galaxy Force, which we had a few entries ago, Afterburner on the Master System is a quite playable version of the game and does have some nice graphics and retains the music and all of that. This is actually perhaps um, 
I mean, Afterburner as a game is so, you know, usually packed out with things going on that it can be kind of hard to understand exactly what's happened and you tend to die pretty quickly. The slowness of this actually kind of makes this a bit more traditionally playable, weirdly. So I'd kind of like it for that reason. I can actually get somewhere in it without dying immediately. And yeah, I think it's actually a really decent conversion considering the system and considering like the game that it's trying to emulate. Not bad at all. Number 18, I have to say, is a Master System game that I usually gets ripped on quite a lot, especially because it is quite the rip-off, but I think it's a really damn good game and I enjoy playing it a lot. Master of Darkness, otherwise known as Vampire. Master of Darkness gets a lot of shit, and I do mean a lot of shit, because, I mean, it is a flat-out Castlevania clone. Everything about this game just screams Castlevania. You know, you've got the stairs, you've got, like, the multiple parts of stages, you've got the enemies, you've got the general horror vibe. It, it's a, it is trying to be Castlevania so hard, and... Even then, and even then some parts of it obviously doesn't get right like getting like the crappy dagger as your weapon you kind of need to get the sword or the axe stat if you want to get anywhere in this game or the stick but Castlevania itself is not exactly a bad game to be ripping off on I mean it's a obviously it's a gameplay classic and Master of Darkness does not do a bad job at kind of being a pretender to the Castlevania legend I do think the gameplay in this is pretty quality and also I love the gothic sort of Victorian London horror vibe that this game has. I think as a game goes, like the graphics in this game for 8 bits are absolutely beautiful. Like they really do take some beating as far as platform games like this go. So yeah, that kind of makes it a very memorable game to me. Honestly, I think this game is brilliant. I mean, sure, it is a total out and out Castlevania ripoff, but I think it still kind of stands as a good game despite that. Definitely, if you haven't played this or you just kind of thought of it as a Castlevania ripoff, give it a chance. You might really like it. 17, Wonder Boy in Monsterland. You knew we were going to see Wonder Boy again. It wasn't just going to be the first entry. Obviously, after the first entry, Wonder Boy as a series got a little bit more involved, started adding a lot of RPG elements and more traditional platforming elements to it. This game is um, it's a tough one. You only get one life. It's a fairly long game for what it is. There's no password system or anything. And it's really easy to get hit. And you don't often get that many refills for your health. But it's a fun game. I mean, as most Wonder Boy games are. It is fun in the arcade. And it's a perfect fit on the Master System. Like, Wonder Boy really shines, I think, on this platform in particular. To me, Wonder Boy is almost, you know... It goes with the Master System as well as Alex Kidd and Opa Opa do. Like, def def definite. Um, we won't, this won't be the last we see of him either. I'm sure you can guess what other Wonder Boy game is going to be a bit higher up. So yeah, excellent game. Definitely worth playing. You probably know it already, though. Number 16, Alien Syndrome. Alien Syndrome on the Master System sometimes tends to get a bit of flack. Alien Syndrome is a hard game as it is. This this version is even harder because aliens just tend to appear just where you're at. Like you're suddenly you're trying to go around and all of a sudden, oh shit, there's an alien. But I, I love Alien Syndrome in general. Like a lot of you know this if you've seen my video that I made on Alien Syndrome. I think it's an all-time classic. And even since I made that video, Alien Syndrome as an arcade game only gets more impressive and more a game that I love in my mind. It's honestly one of my favourite Sega arcade games and I think that this is a cracking conversion of the game. I don't think I actually rated it all that highly when I did that video, weirdly enough, but on playing it uh, more recently, playing it for this list, seeing where it would go, I was like, hang on, no, I actually really like this, this is brilliant. It's just fun to, you know, get the laser and just try and survive against all the waves of HR Giga aping xenomorphs there are in this game. I I just love Alien Syndrome, so it's definitely going to feature on this list, and it ends up featuring as high as number 16. So we head into the top 15. Previously, we've had some compile games that aren't exactly their usual output. At number 15, we have a game that very much is. We've got Power Strike. Um, Power Strike, or um, Elise, Alesti, however you want to pronounce it in other territories. Brilliant game. 
it's a compile shooter you've got so many different weapons you've got all sorts of power-ups you've got those little unique quibbles that you get those unique foibles that you get in a compile game um top-notch gameplay hard as balls seriously is hard i mean you do get you know extra lives pretty frequently but still you can just get swamped by enemy bullets in this game and there's only so much that your alternate weapons can do in absorbing those shots but it's like any good shoot 'em up you know it's a game that's going to provide a challenge but it's a game that you're kind of willing to stick for and try and learn fantastic game a classic on the system number 14 rampage Rampage is an odd one, obviously a very, very popular arcade game, I mean this game perhaps more than any other in the list does not need an introduction. A very simplistic game, I mean all you do is, you know, you mount buildings and smash the crap out of them with your fists and try to avoid being shot even though you won't. Um, and it's a game that appeared on literally everything, I don't think there's a system out there that doesn't have some version of Rampage. And the Master System version for me, of all the versions of Rampage, is the best one. Um, it's got, I think the gameplay is there. Um, I love the music in this game, which is weird because Rampage generally is not a game known for music. And it's got that classic Rampage satisfaction. I mean, there's just something primal and entertaining about mountain buildings, climbing all over them, punching them, eating the occupants, and then watching as they fall to the ground. Rampage just has that um, <laughs> has that satisfaction about it. It's very simplistic. It's not exactly deep, but it's lovely. It's a great game to just play for 20, 30 minutes and just have a lot of fun with. The only real downside of this version, I suppose, is that it doesn't have three players. That's the only real downside. But other than that, great. At number 13, unlucky for some, we've got Black Belt. A game that I literally talked about on the channel, what, a couple of weeks ago? Also known as the original Hakuto no Ken game on the Master System. It's a simple game, very Kung Fu Master, very walk righty, very punch and kicky, but I've always enjoyed this game. I've kind of put Black Belt here because it is the game that I spent a lot more time with, especially as a youth, as I said in the video, but this is good in any form. And if you think that this sounds slightly different than the audio that's just gone before, it's because I forgot to do this and I'm recording this just as I'm about to ender. And while I'm here, I also may as well stick in a game that I completely forgot to include, which is Hanon. I cannot let this list go out without the Sega Master Systems launch title, which was a very freaking impressive effort at porting a proper scalar arcade game to the Master System. So yeah, here's Hanon. Now back to number 12 I believe it is. Number 12 we've got East The Vanished Omens, the original East game on the Master System, East Wise, YS, however you want to pronounce it. You couldn't really have this list and not have a game as complex and brilliant and as lovingly crafted as East on there. I mean, again, this is a very famous game in Japan. Obviously, there's tons of versions of this game, even up to relatively recent times. People are still making versions of the original East. But this is still a standout version of the game, especially if you play it with, if you can get like that FM soundtrack again, because if there's anything that's really good about East games, it's the soundtrack. Obviously, it can be difficult to kind of get used to, especially for a Western player, like the concept of actually bumping into enemies as opposed to flat out attacking them can be kind of difficult to get used to at first. And um, I'm not necessarily sure about the medieval translation that they went with for the Western version of this title. It kind of feels a bit weird, but still, it works. It's it's ace. I mean, if you like RPGs, especially if you like action RPGs, chances are you've probably played this, you probably have a favourite version, and a lot of people probably played this Master System version, so yeah, it's a good one. Number 11, Power Strike 2, Compiler, very quickly back again. Power Strike 2, quite a late game for the Master System, again I think you were talking about 1993 here, a good few years after the original Power Strike, and this is a very rare game today and a very expensive one, and it's easy to see why. This is a shoot 'em up that's really pushing the Master System to its limits, I mean the graphics in this game and the speed of it are just 
absolutely fantastic. I mean, is it a game that's necessarily worth the outrageous money that people are asking for it nowadays? Perhaps not, but it is the best traditional shooter on the Master System of that, there is no doubt. I mean, it's everything that was good about the original Power Strike, only even better. And it's by one of the greatest shoot 'em up studios of all time. And Compile as a studio were probably one of the best on the Master System outside Sega themselves. Even this game, as excellent as it is, is not the top Compile game on the list. What is that? Well, you'll see soon enough. So we go into the top 10, and we start the top 10 with Sonic the Hedgehog. I have to say, generally, the Sonic the Hedgehog games on the Master System, whether it's Sonic the Hedgehog 2, Sonic Chaos and all that, generally I'm not a fan of them. I think they're pretty damn second rate compared to what you've got on the Mega Drive. I mean, it's, it's kind of clear that these are second division titles and there's not a lot of thought that went into them. But the exception to that is the first Sonic the Hedgehog game on Master System and indeed on Game Gear. This is one that actually kind of plays well with the 8-bit format and tries to do things that accommodate that bring Sonic quite comfortably into the 8-bit world as opposed to just trying to do a 16-bit Sonic game in 8 bits. The boss battles can be annoying at times seeing as you die in one hit and you don't get any runes. But the actual level design in this is really solid as far as Sonic games goes. It's certainly for me a lot better than the other Sonic games that were on here, which is why this is the only Sonic game on this Sega list, which isn't something you'd usually say. But yeah, it's definitely as good as Sonic gets on the Master System. They really should have stuck with, you know, developing this formula then, whatever they were trying to do with the other Sonic games, the later ones, which I just don't like. In at number 9 we have Rastan. Rastan on the Master System is a, is a weird little game, it's kind of different to the other versions of the game. I mean Rastan is usually more of a side scroll, of course a classic side scroller where you play as some big hulking muscular guy with a massive broadsword and you just trash all the enemies that are approaching you from the right. Um, whereas this game kind of has a few more adventure elements about it and some really difficult platforming at times which can be difficult especially because Rastan as a character is not exactly, he's pretty ungainly as you'd expect from a big like Conan style character. And then you've got like the dungeon sections which can be even tougher because there's so many traps around. But um, I really like this game, I love the feel of it, it's um, definitely for me the best conversion of this game and I kind of wish that again with Rastan that it kind of stuck in doing this, I mean, if you've ever played the absolute garbage that is Rastan Saga 2, whether it's on the arcade or on the Mega Drive or whatever, you'll wish that, you know, they'd really stuck with what they were doing with this conversion of Rastan on the Master System, because this is good and that's just, um, you just look at that and you think, what the hell is that, basically? So yeah, this is great. Number 8, we cannot not have Out1. As far as the scalar conversions on the Master System goes, the scalar arcade conversions, there's no doubt really. Out1 is the best of them. Indeed, this is my favourite conversion of Out1. It beats the Mega Drive version for me. The Mega Drive version is alright, but it's... I don't know, something about the Mega Drive version is perhaps just a little bit too choppy for me. I mean, this is a bit choppy as well, but you kind of expect it on the Master System, even this also has, even if this also has kind of weird parts, like when you're going through those barriers and the, the car, like the way you control a car completely changes. You know, it has weird foibles like that, that can be a bit annoying at times, but to me this is just, something about this conversion of Out1 just makes it the one that best captures the feel of what Out1 was going for, you know, that it's as, used to because you know it's not a game about racing it's a game about driving it's got that same um, relaxation about it I just um, I really have a soft spot for this master system conversion hence why it's in the top 10 I guess number seven Alex Kidd in Miracle World obviously the main Alex Kidd game was always going to be here maybe some people might have thought it would be a bit higher and indeed it isn't the top Alex Kidd game on the list we will be seeing another one um, Miracle World Low is, well, it's probably one of the most famous, if not the most famous Master System game, especially because it came built in. And as far as 8-bit platformers go, yeah, it's brilliant. Obviously, the annoying parts of Alex Kidd are pretty well known, like the Janken matches and all that, the irritation of the castles that you go into and how random they can be. The actual gameplay itself, though, yeah, is excellent. Is it the best Alex Kidd game, though? 
Actually, no, it's not. The best Alex Kid game is coming in a few entries time. The one that isn't quite as well known. But Miracle World is still rightly a famous game. It's still rightly one of the most famous games of the Master System. Speaking of famous Master System games, at number 6 we have Wonder Boy 3 The Dragon's Trap. A game that has only got more and more love as the years gone by. Um, this was quite a late game again back in the day. I think this was like 1989 by which time obviously the system was virtually finished in Japan and was kind of winding down in the US. So not many people perhaps played this at the time. But as um, the appetite for Wonder Boy or Monster World or what have you has only increased over the years. What with the re-release and evaluation of Monster World 4. And also this coming out recently being um, sort of remastered and all that um this game is rightly being known as one of the great sort of 8-bit adventure platformers it's sort of everything that wonder boy in monsterland did only even better it's as ideal a sequel as you want and it's great to see the evolution of wonder boy like we started out with the original perfectly simple side scroller the one that adventure island on the nintendos would sprout from and we end up here we end up with the dragon's trap and then we end up going from here to monster world 4 so you know it's um Wonder, Wonder Boy, as far as a series goes, certainly has one of the most satisfying evolutions, I think, as far as, like, classic series goes. It's not, um, it's not something that just stood still, which is something that I really enjoy about the Wonder Boy games. So, top five time, and this top five unquestionably all classics, like, for me, the absolute five essential Master System games are here. Number five, we've got Shinobi. Shinobi, I think you all know by now, is a game that I absolutely adore. I love the original Shinobi. It's one of my favourite arcades. It's one of my most nostalgic arcades. There used to be um, a machine of Shinobi in the video rental shop that was just down the street from me. And I used to spend every night in there with my dad playing it. Um, trying to get past the stage 3 boss, usually, Mandara. Um, and to have it on the Master System, when I was able to get this on the Master System, even though it was on my Master System converter and I used to have, a, you know, plenty of Mega Drive games that I could be playing, I still spent a hell of a lot of time just playing Shinobi um, because it, I adore this game. Obviously, this game is a bit different from the arcade version. You don't die in one hit anymore. You don't have to rescue the hostages, the children, if you don't want to, although it's very strongly recommended that you do. Um... But it plays beautifully, and to me, this ended up kind of being the definitive version of the game for me, even over the arcade version that I have so many memories from. I have so many memories of this as well. Let's try and say that three times fast. Um, sure, it's got a very unsatisfying ending once you get through the tough challenges, and there's some really annoying parts, like that aforementioned stage three end boss, like that one jump in stage four that you... If you've played this, you know there's that one jump that's basically pixel perfect. But still, Shinobi. Great game. Great conversion. In at number four is a game, a Master System game that I didn't quite appreciate the brilliance of until recently. The Ninja. The Ninja, I specifically remember renting a couple of times and getting very frustrated of it because I would just rent it. And I couldn't get anywhere in it. I would, like, the first few ninjas would just kill me outright. And then uh, I was playing it on stream not too long back. And someone actually pointed out, you do know that you can press both buttons to get a go invisible, right? To be temporarily invincible. And I was like, really? I didn't know that. I obviously didn't look at the manual back in the day. What, what's changed? And start doing that. And then start playing the game and suddenly the game becomes very impulsive and very addictive. It becomes very satisfying when you avoid those hordes of shurikens coming at you. It's satisfying to play. You kind of figure out when's the best time to do the regular, you know, throwing shurikens or use the strafing. You get all these different scenes and ways of doing things. You get the really hard parts but now it's not just a case of being hard and feeling like you're overmatched. It's a feeling of like actually being satisfied when you get through parts like the old log section. Um, and in the end, what I end up with is a game that I adore playing. I do adore playing now. It's a game that I often come back to to see if I can get better at. Um, and for me, even though it's a very early it's title, like the earliest in the top five by far, 
it's a great title to me it's a fantastic title it is one it has become very fast one of my master system favorites i mean there are a few games here that were really kind of vying for that number one spot and there was one point when i thought would the ninja end up being the number one in the end it's number four but yeah excellent excellent game highly recommended by me top three we have compiles top game one of the best third party sega developers on the master system it's Golvelius Valley of Doom, no surprises there. Golvelius often gets a bit of stick because it's seen as a Zelda clone. And yeah, a lot of it is Zelda, you know, you've got the top down parts where, you know, there's lots of monsters going about and, you know, you whack them all with your sword. Kind of like Zelda, huh? And it's And perhaps, you know, again, the overworld design isn't necessarily as good as Zelda, it's perhaps a bit more linear, there's not so much exploration. But Golvelius is a bit more than a Zelda clone. There's so many different great things to it. It's not just a great top-down game, like because it does that really well, the whole top-down overworld Zelda-esque part. It's a great dungeon crawler. It's a great scrolling shooter. It's a great side-on platformer. It does all these different things, and it does them really well, while also having some of the best presentation that you're going to see on the Master System, um, some of the best music, some of the best graphics, and it does all these things and it kind of comes off in the end as a master of all trades and a jack of none. It's one of Compile's best games. It may not be a shooter like a lot of their great games are, but as far as top-down RPGs go on the Master System action RPGs, this is fantastic. It's not the best RPG on the system, I think you know what that is, but if you haven't played Golvelius or if you've just heard it dismissed as our, it's just another Zelda clone from the 8-bit days, play it. It may be a lot like Zelda, but I honestly think Golvelius can give The Legend of Zelda a one for its money. It's got enough kind of differences and tweaks and plays on the formula for it to stand out well on its own. Definitely play this game. In at number two is the top game featuring Alex Kidd, and funny enough, it's a mega mix of titles that we've seen already. Alex Kidd in Shinobi World. A strange game, a game that you wonder why it exists, quite a late game, I think it only, yeah, no, it's quite a late game, um, the last Alex Kidd title, I think generally, I think this came out after Enchanted Castle on the Mega Drive, so this was the last one, um, and it kind of takes Alex Kidd and puts him in Shinobi Land, so the gameplay is very like Shinobi in many ways, but obviously the graphics and that are a lot more cuter than they are in Shinobi, um, but what you end up with, which is quite satisfying, especially because after Miracle World there were a lot of Alex Kidd titles that were very unsatisfying. Finally, you know, Alex Kidd, after kind of being dropped as Sega's main mascot, ends on a very high note. This is a game that just gets better and better every time I play it. There's cool little pickups to be found everywhere, sometimes secrets here and there. There's a lot of variation in the different stages. It's not a long game, I think there's only like four rounds in the game. Um, but every moment of it is incredibly satisfying. Um, there's some cute funny things as well, like you've got the level one boss, that's a clear take that at Mario. There's so much fun to be had in this game. It's, you know, you've got like the tornado that you can turn into, you've got climbing on the poles and turning yourself into a fireball. It's so fun to play. It's a bit tough at parts, especially when you get into the last stages. It's maybe a short game, but it's not a game that's just going to let you walk all over it. To me, it's the most satisfying platformer on the system. It beats out Miracle World for me, definitely. And I love it. It is an expensive game these days. It has to be said, like, really expensive now, because I think more and, more and more people have kind of realised just how good this game is. But it's definitely a game that if you've not played Alex Kidd, you got to. And so finally we get to number one, and as I said, there were a few games that I was really thinking about for being the number one for the Master System. In the end though, I had to go with, I suppose, the generic choice. Pretty much anyone who you ask, you say, they ask you to see, you, or you ask them, what's the best game on the Master System? They're going to say Fantasy Star, and I can't argue with that, and in the end, Fantasy Star is my number one game. I mean, I do love Fantasy Star as it is because it is quite a different series of RPGs from a lot of other games in that it's got that kind of sci-fi vibe, which I really enjoy. I much prefer that to, you know, having like 
I don't know, a fantasy or a medieval kind of vibe, which is why I greatly prefer this to say East, for example. Um, fantasy Star is a game pushed the Master System to its limits pretty much like no other game did. It was um, such an expansive game at the time. It had amazing, you know, design in its enemies, in its world. It had like the proper full RPG experience, perhaps for many in the West, the first time they'd really experienced that. Um, and of course, it's got those incredibly memorable dungeons, which just still look brilliant nowadays. I mean, some people might think nowadays that they're reminded of a like Windows 98 screensaver looking at these dungeons. But when you kind of experience this for the first time, even when I look at it now, I still think, wow, that looks good. I mean, even if it's only like it's only like bricks and mortar, but it's still I still love the look of it. Um, obviously, it has um, a, one of the greatest soundtracks of all time as well, especially one of the greatest 8-bit soundtracks. To me, this is kind of as good as 8-bit RPG and gets. I mean, I say that not necessarily being the biggest fan of RPGs, but the ones, the RPGs that I do love, I mean, I love. And yeah, Fantasy Star for me is a classic. And I really can't argue with anyone, with the majority of people who would say that this is the top game on the Master System. I mean, it is the game that to many is the most memorable. So really, in the end, although there were a few games vying for that number one spot, Fantasy Star has to be number one, and it totally deserves to be. It's just, um, it's brilliant in every way, and it is the definitive Master System title. So, that's the number one, Fantasy Star. <sighs> and with that, we are, well, we're done. We're done with the top 50 Master System games. I hope you've enjoyed this little list. I will probably do a few more lists in the future now and then. I'm not going to go back to back like I was doing previously and they won't all be like top 100s or like crazy stuff like that. But you guys really like them and I can't ignore that. So if people want to, you know, see what my favourite games are for favourite systems, you know, who am I to deny that? So I'm sure there'll be more coming. But for now, I hope you enjoyed this Master System list. Hopefully... It's brought you brought some attention to some games that people may not necessarily be aware of. People can use this as a guide for games that they want that should you should play on the Master System if you're just getting into the joys of Sega's 8-bit machine. And yeah, hopefully you get a lot out of this list. And I'm sure that in the comments you'll all be telling me about all the titles that I missed on this list. So I look forward to that. Anyway, thank you for watching and as ever I shall say bye for now. Many thanks for watching this, the top 50 Master System games of all time, at least as far as I'm concerned. Hopefully you enjoyed it, hopefully some of your favourites made it, and if you liked it, I'm sure that you'll be shouting about it all in the comments. Don't forget to like this video, put some nice comments in, have a look at my social media, and perhaps also have a look at my Patreon, where you could join this list of awesome people right here. Alexa Jones Gonzalez, Andrew Dalton, Andy Capt, Asobi Quan DX, Brian Henniger, Chris, Cody Spooner, Conrad Pritchard, D, Zadio Winwon Sutter, Dave Cork, David Rose, Dinty76538, Dustin Cooper, Gary Samaden, Jordi Alex, Glun Feth, Ian Roberts, James Brown, Jason Stevens, Jace Alexander, Jeff Ladd, Lucas Kaligowski, Mateusz Gramzov, Martin Pataki, Proto Margel, Ren Bimon, Rusty Kelly, Samir Alamar, Seth Robinson, Simon Gulliver, Tariq Amir, The Geeky Dad, Tim Wald, Yurka Operator, and to all the rest of the wonderful community, thank you and goodbye.